Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. If this is your first time on my channel, we build video games. So right now we are learning about Unity and we have only just begun in this process. So in the last video, I walked you through the tutorial in setting up your FPS micro game. And then I gave you guys some time to look at how to um, basically adjust the settings, how to change the settings on your enemies, on your player, and also on your weapons. So we talked about that. We also made some small edits, um, such as editing the health drop. So that instead of the plus sign, we used a food item. So some basic stuff like that. We're going to do some more editing today, a whole bunch more editing to, the, to this game. Of course, when you build yours, edit it however you want to. I'm just here to offer you guys some tips, some tricks, some resources, a guide, in ways that you can edit your game. So before we get to all that, I decided it would be a good idea to show you guys the game that I made when I first did this project. So this is a couple years old, but this is the game that I made when I went through the FPS um, micro game. So I called the game Monkey Fights Back. Basically the story is based on the um, you know early space days when we were sending chimps up into space. I thought it'd be kind of funny that aliens abducted one of these creatures and so you were playing as this space monkey this monkey trying to get back to earth right of course it really should be an ape because they were chimpanzees but you guys get the point so this game is based on that kind of sci-fi so let's go ahead and take a look at it i did turn the sound off so that you wouldn't be distracted while i was playing so first off you're going to notice the set looks a little different than it did in the original game that's because i downloaded this building that i'm in right now I got this building from the asset store. So of course you got the red dots up there, which show you that I've got a lot of enemies. On the top left corner up here, I want you to notice that there are two objectives. One that says get to the spaceship and the other one says eliminate all the enemies. So I have multiple objectives in this game. Get to the spaceship is the main objective. That's what ends the game. That's what gives you the win. The eliminate all enemies is an optional objective. So technically you could win this game. Oh, you could win this game without defeating all the enemies just by getting to the checkpoint so the checkpoint gets, get, says get to the spaceship so if you can just escape even if you don't defeat all the enemies you'll still win the game that's the way i decided to build this one so here i destroyed the robots and then for my health pack i'm using a banana because as i mentioned of course i'm playing as a space ape all right so i've got the banana here and then i'm going down here and here's where i actually go back to the original map I did keep most of the original map. I just made some small changes to it. Oh, here's another robot for me to defeat. Uh, also, you might notice that my pistol is a little different. I used a modern pistol instead of the sci-fi pistol because this was supposed to be, uh, you know, an Earth creature I'm playing as. So I thought it'd be cool to play using Earth weapons. All right. So over here. And of course, I did that. If you're curious, how did I change the way the pistol looks? I did the same way we changed the health pack to a cheeseburger in the last video. Basically, I found the weapon, the weapon prefab for the pistol, and I deactivated the, the model that they used, and I put my own pistol in there instead. Same thing with this. So this is the shotgun, but I edited it to look like a human shotgun instead of a space shotgun. So that is the shotgun pickup that I just grabbed. And if I switch weapons with number two, I'm now using the shotgun that I made. So some other modifications that I made, you guys are going to notice the walls are all see-through now. So this is technically the same map that was in the original, but I changed the walls, made them transparent. So that was kind of fun. Basically, I just changed the material that was on the wall. And I can show you guys how to do that too. There was a step in the walkthrough tutorial or like you change the flo the floors to different colors it was the same basic idea i just changed the material of the walls to make them transparent of course you can change your walls and floors to look like whatever you want them to look like so i think i also changed the floors here yeah this is definitely not the original floors so i made lots of visual changes to the game um other things that i changed oh the title page you guys saw at the beginning there was a title page right so I edited that. I also created a win and lose screen. So that looks different depending on whether I win the game or lose the game. I have different screens for those. 
All right, so to win the game, all I have to do is get to that spaceship right into there. Now, I could take my time and kill all of these robots, or I could just run for it. And I feel like run, running for it, so let's go. Try to avoid getting shot too much in the process. As long as I make it to the spaceship, I will win and survive. There we go. All objectives completed, because even though I didn't do the minor objective, it wasn't necessary. You win, but like how? You're a monkey with a gun, and they are advanced alien robots with lasers. You really should be dead right now. All right, so that was the win message that I made. You can customize the title of this game. You can customize the win screen and the lose screen. And when I say customize, I don't just mean change the text. You can also change the background pictures, right? So a lot of stuff that you can do there. Okay, so let's get to the games, and let me show you some of these changes and how you can make them. Oh, before I do all that, I would highly recommend that you take advantage of the Unity Asset Store. So I've got it open here in another tab. The Unity Asset Store is an amazing resource for finding free stuff to put in your games. So in the Unity Asset Store, there is a ton of things to go through. What I usually do is I click on the one that I'm interested in. So if I'm looking for 3D, 2D, whatever the case may be, I'm going to go ahead and click on 3D, and now I'm looking at all of the 3D assets. On the right-hand side here, you're going to see the pricing. Of course, I don't want to spend any money on it, and I'm sure you probably don't either, so we're just going to look at the free assets. So I'm going to check that box, and now I'm only looking at free 3D assets, and there are still a lot of them. If you look at the search bar over there, there are 3,000 results, so you might want to narrow this down a little bit. But if I'm looking through this list, let's see what kind of stuff we have. A lot of it is just decoration. This one is a pack that has a bunch of nature things like trees and rocks and flowers. This is the food prop, which you should have downloaded in the tutorial, right? Um, there's other things in here. There are some characters, which really wouldn't make too much sense in this game. Um, lots of decorations, lots of outdoorsy stuff, all sorts of things. You can narrow down your search in a couple different ways. Right here where it does say 3D. I can select different types of 3D. If it does not showing all that, you just click on the little arrow right here to open it up. So if I wanted to just look at environments, now I can look at all the 3D environment things I can download. Now our list is only down to 824 free items. <laughs> Still pretty cool. That's a lot of free stuff. So a lot of things I can go through here. Here's one that helps you build cities. So maybe instead of doing this game in the sci-fi world, maybe I want to do this game in the city or in the country. There's all sorts of stuff here that I could use. That there, the 3D free modular pet kit, that's what I used in my game. That room that I started off in, I downloaded that from this kit. There's so much stuff here. Here's another really good sci-fi pack. So some really cool stuff in there. Ooh, abandoned asylum, that would be scary. So there's so, so, so much stuff. So first thing I would recommend as you start editing your game, think about what do you want your game to look like? right? You might want to download some of this free stuff. Another thing you might want to download, and I would definitely recommend it, is called a skybox. Up here where it says search for assets, I'm just going to type in skybox. So a skybox is the decoration of the sky. What does the sky look like? So in our original game, if I go back here, I actually didn't change it in my game. So oh, you can't see it from this room. I have to get to the other scene. Let me see if I can get back there. But in the original sky, oh, why do I just keep on doing that? In the original game, you are playing in space and there's like planets and stuff around you, right? So that's the, the original sky box. You've got this alien planet, looks like there's lava and all that jazz. So you can change that, right? So there are a lot of free sky boxes available. I like the packs myself. So this one comes with like 220 sky boxes. That's awesome. There are some other kits that have a bunch of them. This one's a pretty good one. So feel free to download any of these that you might want to use. Some of them work better than others, but there are a lot of free sky boxes out there. Holy cow, 2000? That's more than I expected. Um, maybe if we limit it to 3D sky boxes, maybe? I don't know. I don't know about that. But yeah, feel free to poke around in this. I'm sure you can find something awesome. Oh yeah, filter by price. We didn't have free turned on. <laughs> That's better. 148. 
Still a lot, but definitely not as much as we were looking at a minute ago. So yeah, 148 free skyboxes here. So a lot of fun stuff. If you still want to keep the space, there's some different space images that are a little different than the original. So I would definitely recommend you spend a little bit of time in the asset store, download any assets that you think look interesting that you might want to use in your game, download some skyboxes that you think you might want to use in your game, and then um, you know pause this video while you're searching around for stuff you might want to use, and then unpause this video and we'll start adding some of this stuff to our games. Sound good? All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I am back in the game. Here's the program that we made before where all we edited was, I think, the weapons. Did we edit the weapons? I don't remember if we edited the weapons or not. But we talked about editing the weapons. We talked about editing enemies. We talked about editing players. So let's make some edits to the visual. Now, I've already got a lot of assets downloaded. When you go to download them, if it's the first time you've ever used it, there's usually a button that allows you to go ahead and open it in Unity, and that can save you a little bit of time. But if you've had it downloaded before, the best way to get to it is to click on the Windows button and then go to Package Manager, and that will show you all your old stuff. Up here where it says My Assets, or sometimes it'll say Unity Registry. You just want to switch it to My Assets. And then from here, I can access everything free that I've ever downloaded. I've got 98 things that I've downloaded, so there's a lot here for me to play around with. But let's go ahead and put some of this in here. So this is one of the skybox things that we saw that I've downloaded before. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-download it and then import it. So that will allow me to put that in my world. Is there anything else I might want to put in this game? Let's see. I'll go ahead and import that. There we go. By the way, when you import things like this, it's usually best to just import the whole thing. But if there's any for anything you don't want to import, you can uncheck it, right? The only time I usually uncheck something is if there's a conflict. So right now there's no conflicts. Everything says new. What will happen sometimes when you're downloading really big packages is there may be something that replaces or changes something you already have, right? If it's trying to change the settings of your game, if you're trying to download something and it's trying to change the game, say no. Don't let it happen. Don't do it because it'll probably break your game. Just a nice tip there. Always be careful when you're downloading stuff to not download something that's going to break your game. All right. Looks like it's downloaded and imported. So now when I go back to my program, I'm going to look in the all materials section and see if I can find the skyboxes. Oh, it looks like here they are. So some of them look like they're not working. Those are the pink ones, but the other ones look absolutely fine. So yeah, there's a lot of good ones here. So how do I put these skyboxes in my scene? Well, normally all you got to do is drag and drop. Let's see if that works. Yep, there we go. So I could drag and drop that, and now I got blue cloudy skies in my game, and I can test it out now. And there we go with our blue skies. Very pretty. Definitely changed the mood of the game there. It's amazing how big of a difference a skybox can make on the mood of a game. So maybe I want to do one of these. These are cool. So I'm still in space, but this time I'm like d down below the planet. I think that might be planet Earth. Let's go to a scene where maybe I can see it a little bit better. Whoops. I'm having a hard time shooting with this uh, trackpad. Anyways, that skybox, basically, instead of me being on a planet, it's almost like I'm in a, uh, maybe a space station outside the planet, right? Because if I use, if I look around, you can see the planet's really above me. So that's pretty cool. So lots of fun stuff you can do there just by grabbing a new skybox. Here I could do a night scene. Now on that one, I'm back on Earth. I kind of like the space one, so I'm going to leave this one. This is cool. All right, so whatever skybox you like, go ahead and find it in your all materials section and drag and drop it into your scene and see how much that changes the mood of your game. For other things that you may have downloaded, just go to all prefabs. That's the easiest way to find stuff you downloaded is just to go to all prefabs. In the all prefab section, you will find everything that's already been pre-made in your game. So there's so much stuff in here. A lot of it came with the original kit, but some of it will be the stuff that you downloaded from the asset store, right? 
So there is a lot of stuff in here. There's stairs, there's ramps, there's wizard hat. That's fun. So some of this stuff is a little bit silly, but there's a lot of stuff here. Here's a party hat. I think the hats were designed to change the enemies. So if you felt like being silly with one of these enemies, here, let's zoom in on him with the F key. Boom. If I felt like being silly with one of these enemies, I could give him a hat. So here, I'm going to give this enemy bot a party hat. Did you see how I did that? I dragged and dropped it onto the name enemy hover bot. Now right here, it's down here. I didn't want it to be on top of the character. So let's put it on top of him. I'm going to use the move tool to move it up here, closer to the top of his head. I do need to rotate it some. Let's use the rotation tool. And I'll try to line it up as best as I can. I'm not sure which way he's facing right now. Man, it is hard to see this dude. But I did give him a party hat. Let's see what it looks like in the game. Hey, party dude. Here he comes. There he is. Oh, I got his, his glasses on sideways. But yeah, basic idea right there. So you can play around with the way they look with silly things like hats and glasses. And maybe you want to download a funny mustache and give it to him. You know, have fun with that. Do whatever you want to do there. So as I was saying, the prefabs is where you will find those things. And you can just drag and drop them into your world wherever you want them to go. Now, keep in mind, if you're doing something that has a floor, you're going to have to reset the nav mesh, right? So if, let me zoom out here. If I decided to do some more stuff oh, on this side, because I've got like this whole open area, maybe I decided to put this in here. Let's take a look at that. That actually looks pretty good, decent. But you notice there's no nav mesh on there, right? So if I put a robot in there, it's not going to work correctly. Let me find a robot. We talked about this in the last video, but I didn't really show it to you. So if I put a robot there, and he's on top of this new building, notice there's no nav mesh. So if I actually go over there, the robot will not be where he's supposed to be. He will not be moving around like he's supposed to be moving around. It's going to bug out, is what I'm trying to say. Why did I put him so far away? And why did I make these enemies so hard to fight? Come here, crooked glass robot. Ah, give me that cheeseburger. All right. So is he over here? He's down here. So he fell through the ceiling and he landed on the floor, which does have a nav mesh. Right? So he was only moving on the floor that had the nav mesh. To fix that, of course, I can go over here to the nav mesh surface area and I can bake it. And now there's a nav mesh there. So now if I was to play the game, he will stay on that blue highlighted area, basically keeping him on top of this building. So fun stuff there. Don't forget is what I'm trying to say. If you add buildings that have floors, don't forget to give it a nav mesh. I just want to run over there. See, there he is. Haha, right where he's supposed to be. Good, good, good. And he's not coming down to fight me because that's his patrolling area. All right. So what else did I want to show you as far as customizing goes? Oh, yeah. We were going to talk about the objectives, and we were also going to talk about the title pages. Okay. So over here in the general section, in the hierarchy, you'll see objective kill enemies. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Objective kill enemies is what is currently in my game. So right now, the only way to kill the game is to defeat all the enemies. Over here in the inspector window, you'll see the objective kill enemies. It says eliminate all the enemies, and then it has the description. So I could edit the description if I wanted to, but that doesn't really change the, the way it works, right? This stat is designed to only work if I defeat all the enemies. But that's because this box is checked. It says must kill all enemies. If I uncheck that, now I can do this one instead, kills to complete. So if I could change this instead of to say eliminate all enemies, let's say I only need to eliminate two enemies. I'll change the text so that the player knows.
And then down here it says kills are complete. I'm going to switch that to two. Boom, boom, boom. So now I can win the game by just defeating two enemies. Let's do it. Gun's overheating. There we go. I got one. And you'll see my objective in the top left corner says one of two. Defeated two. And I won. So I was able to change the objective stats simply by making those edits there. All right. Going back to this, the objective kill enemies. I also want you to notice there's a box here that says is optional. So just like in the example that I showed you, you can have multiple objectives, make some of them optional and some of them not optional. So let's look at the other objectives. These are prefabs, by the way. So in the prefab section, I'm going to go ahead and do a search for objective. So here we go. These are the objectives that we have. So we have three objectives here. Objective, kill enemies, objective, pick up item, Objective reach point, and don't worry about these because I think these are background codes to make the objective work correctly. All right, so right now I have an objective kill enemies in the game. So let's say I wanted to put something else in the game. I'm going to put objective pick up item in the game. So to do that, I just drag this prefab, the objective um, prefab. I'm going to drag it. And I'm just going to drop it in my scene. It doesn't really matter where I put it because it's not really an object so much as it is a setting. I could also drag and drop it into the main scene over here in the hierarchy, and that would work just fine. So there it is, objective pickup item. So now that I have it, I can make edits to it right here. So right there, it says prick up VFX prefab sound effect. It's got some different things going on down here. Pick up item name, whether or not it's optional. So this is the main part that we're worried about. This part down here at the very bottom. What do we want the objective to say? Is it optional or not? And then what objective do we actually want them to pick up? What is the objective that they have to pick up to win? So that's a very good question. What is the item we need them to pick up to win? Hold on. Okay, that's what I thought. That's not a real item. Okay. So in the game, I did put a shotgun right here in the last video. So we're going to make that the pickup item. So in pickup object objective pickup item, where it says item to pick up, I'm going to drag and drop the pickup shotgun. So the one that was up here, I'm going to drag that. I'm going to drop it into there. Did you see that or do I need to do it again? Actually, I don't need to do it again. You can rewind. There we go. And I am going to make this optional, so you don't have to do it to win the game. I'm going to do that. Oh, let me go back to the kill thing, and I'm going to change that back to all enemies, because I don't actually want it to end with only two kills. That's too easy. All right. Eliminate all enemies. Defeat all enemies. And we're going to turn on must kill all enemies. Okay. So now I have a mandatory objective to defeat all the enemies and an optional objective to go pick up the shotgun. Oh, I forgot to change the text. My bad. So it says pick up item name. <laughs> That's a bug. All right, but let's go take a look at it anyways. So here we go. Killing some of the enemies, and then I gotta go get the item. I like the fact that you can name objectives because it allows you to create a little bit of a story in your game possibly, right? All right, that objective went away. Cool. Let's get out of here. All right. So the objective pick up item, it's probably a good idea for me to change this. So instead of saying pick up item name, I could say pick up shotgun. And then if I want to give more information, I could do that in the description, right? So maybe in the description, I say find shotgun. But it looks like that was optional. I didn't have to put a description there. All right, so there are, like I said, multiple objectives. You can use whichever ones you want to. You can decide which objectives to make mandatory and which ones to make optional. The other objective was the objective reach point. Let's go ahead and grab that and put it in the game right quick. So just like the other one, I'm going to drag and drop it 
into, oh, that's the wrong one. Drag and drop it into our scene. Objective reach point. And then where is the part that we change it? Right here. Objective reach point. Reach the area. And then I could give it more of a description if I want to, and I can decide whether or not to make it optional. And the cool thing is it actually creates the checkpoint right here. So I would put this wherever I want the, the player to actually go to to win the game, right? So in the example of the game that I made, I had downloaded a spaceship, and then I put this around the spaceship. So let me use the F key to find it. So this player isn't actually going to see this, I don't think. I don't think they can see this. So it's probably a good idea to put something there, something that is visible for them to be able to see. Make sense? Because I don't think they're actually going to see the checkpoint itself. They will see it on the map. So if I go into the map, the checkpoint is that diamond on the map up there at the top, right? Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, those are your three different objectives you can play around with. You can the one objective based on killing enemies, one objective based on picking up items, one objective based on getting to a particular area. Feel free to use whichever ones of those you want. Decide which ones are optional, which ones are mandatory. Have fun with that. Okay, so we talked about changing the background sky. We talked about changing the objective. I showed you how to download things and put them in your world. Remember, always grab them from the prefab section. Don't grab them from the model section. Well, I guess technically you could. If it's just decoration, if you're just using it for decoration, feel free to grab it from the models. But the, the reason you don't normally want to use models is because models don't have any stats on them. So they're literally just for decoration. So if I put this archway in here, for example, it has no stats. I could walk through it. I don't mean walk under it. I mean literally walk through it. It's just a decoration, right? But some of these decorations are kind of fun. So if you wanted to use some of these models, feel free to do so. But normally you'd want to grab from the all prefab section because all prefabs are actually finished. They're done. They represent real objects in your world that have stats attached to them, as you can see over here in the inspector window. Okay, so decorate your world however you want to with downloaded assets, downloaded skyboxes, change your objectives however you want to. That's all great. The last thing that I wanted to show you in this short video, what was the last thing I wanted to show you? Oh yeah, the intro, the end, and the windscreens. Let's go. So in the project tab down here, if you go to FPS and you go to scenes, so this is pretty important. The main scene is the scene you're in right now. This is the main game that you are in. You are playing inside of the main scene. The intro menu is the title page. The lose scene is what you see when you lose. And the win scene is what you see when you win. So let's go check them out. I'm going to double click on intro menu. It is asking me if I want to save my work. I'm going to say yes. All right, I am now in the intro menu. Doesn't look like much, does it? But I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. Oh, there it is. So there's the actual menu. I'm going to right click and use my WASD stuff to scroll over a little bit. So this is the intro menu. There is nothing on it right now. So to change it, I'm going to go over here in the hierarchy. I'm going to open up the canvas. And here I have the background image, the title text, the start button, and the controls and all that jazz. So the title text is really just going to be the title. I can give it whatever title I want to. I'm going to just put test game for now. So I can give it whatever title I want to there. I can edit things about it. There's things about the style of the text. There's fonts. Not a lot of font options, but there are a few, right? So I could change the font to one of these. Woohoo. Oh, that's kind of cool. Pixelated. So I can do some fun stuff there. Bold, underline, some different things there. Font size, auto size. So yeah, I can also move it around, right? So if I wanted to go higher up, whatever the case may be. So feel free to customize your title page, however you want to do that. For the background picture, I'm going to select this object here that says background image. And right here, it says raw image. It has a texture. This is the image it is currently using. If I click on the dot here, I can choose one of these other images as my background. 
Now, these are just the pictures that have been pre-downloaded. So these are things that I already had in my game. Here's some weird ones. Cool. I didn't even know those were in here. I wonder where those came from. So I've got, yeah, I've got a couple pre-downloaded images that I could potentially use for my title page. But here's the cool thing. You can put your own pictures in here, guys. You can. You can put your own pictures in here. So to do that, you would just need to import them into Unity. So let's say you already have a picture that you want to use. There's a few good pictures in here. I like some of these. So let's say you have a picture you already want to use and you want to use it for your title page. To import into here, first, figure out where you want to import it. You might want to do it just in the original asset folder, or you might want to organize your stuff maybe and put it in one of these other folders. For instance, the FPS folder has an art section. I might want to put my pictures in here so it stays in the art section. So easy to find. Figure out where you want to put your pictures to keep it organized. Then right click in that area. Click import new asset. And from here, you need to find the picture that you want to download, right? Now, if I go to the background image where it has the texture, I can put that picture. Boom. So this was a screenshot of a different game, and I can use that as my title page background. So you can use whatever pictures you want to. You just have to import them if you got them from somewhere else. So maybe you want to take a screenshot of something in your game, or maybe you just want to take a picture that you found online somewhere that you thought was pretty cool. So you can use any of those pictures as the background picture for your title page. And the same goes for the other scenes. So your win scene. Well, let me save it. Sure. So your win scene, you edit the same way as you do the title page. You edit the text here. You edit the background here. Do you Should you edit these buttons? I mean, you can if you want to, but you don't have to, right? So for instance, that text here just says play again. Maybe you want it to say something else instead of play again. Um, for instance, maybe you want to be kind of mean and you want to go to the lose scene. And for the play again button, instead you want to put try again with a question mark or something like that, right? You could totally do that. The button's still going to work the same way because we haven't changed the code. We just changed the words. So feel free to customize those three scenes however you want to. The title page, which is the intro menu, the lose scene, and the win scene. Now you may be looking at all these scenes and wondering, what is this secondary scene? That is for if you build a multi-level game. We'll talk more about that in another video because this video is already getting long enough. So remember what we covered in this video. We covered how to download things from the asset store, how to put those things in your game using the all prefab section, how to change the sky in your world. We talked about how to change the objectives and I'm forgetting all the things we did, but we did a lot. So here's what I need you to do. If you learned something new today, click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about my channel so that they can build fun games too. All right. I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of your day.